Magandang araw, mga kababayan. This is TV Ops Science Innovation Series. I'm Giselle Concepcion, a scientist and professor at the Marine Science Institute. I do research on marine drug discovery. I'm the co-host of this program, and I'd like to introduce my co-host, Benji Vallejo. Benji? Good day. Uh, I'm Benji Vallejo from the Institute of Environmental Science and Meteorology of the College of Science, where I am uh, teaching as an associate professor. And my, I, I deal with issues on biodiversity and biogeography. And concurrently, I head the Science, Technology, and Society program of the University of the Philippines in Dilima. Thanks, Benj. Our exciting topic for today is Benham rice, renamed Philippine rice. And for this topic, we have with us as guests very important faculty in the university who, whom I would like to uh, introduce, Rodora Asansa. Hello, I'm Rodora Asansa from the Marine Science Institute. I'm a marine uh, botanist, so I work on marine plants, which is the base of uh, the food chain in the marine environment. Uh, these are the seaweeds and the phytoplankton. Nice to see you all. Thanks, Rod. Then we have Fernando and Siringan. Magandang araw sa lahat. Uh, ako ay nagtuturo sa Marine Science Institute. Isa akong geologist, pero ang aking research ay ginagawa ko sa dagat. Salamat, Ando. Now we have Alisa Paleo Alampay. Hi, uh, magandang araw din ho sa inyong lahat. Ako rin ho ay isang geologist, but I specialize in uh, the organisms, in particular fossils, which I use to study the oceans also of the past and the present. Thank you. Maraming salamat, mga, mga guests natin. This uh, is going to be a very exciting and informative discussion for our kababayans. So, let's start the ball rolling. Ando, can you tell us how the Benham rice was formed geologically? Um, it's, a shang, it's a volcanic feature. And if you imagine Hawaii, Hawaii is a huge volcanic feature. But set that in a deep marine setting mm -hmm. where you have a lot of lava coming out of an almost a concentrated area and that going on for several million years that led basically to the formation of what we're calling Benham Plateau. Okay. So malaki siya, malapad, malawak na volcanic features sa ilalim ng dagat. On top of that plateau, meron ka ngayong, there are volcanic edifices. Isipin natin ang uh, hugis lupa katulad ng Mayon Volcano. At yung Mayon Volcano, palaparin mo pa siya, patangkarin mo siya, ilagay mo siya, ipatong mo siya doon sa Benham Plateau. Yun ngayon yung tinatawag natin ngayon na Benham Rice na tinatawag natin sa pangkasalukuyan sa Pilipinas na Philippine Rice. Itong volcanic feature na ito ay hindi lamang nag-iisa sa Benham Plateau. There are several of these volcanic edifices. The biggest and the feature that comes to the shallowest, with the shallowest depth is, is uh, the Philippine rice. Okay, so ando, napaka exciting or unique yung um, uh, volcanic uh, structures na yan under the ocean. At mamaya, aalamin natin kung merong bang mga uh, organisms na nagta-thrive dyan. Pero I think, Benji, meron kang gustong panangin kung paano talaga nag-umpisa ng ating Benham rice. Magaling, interesting uh, tingnan dyan na topic yung, yung biodiversity talaga ng Benham Rice. Kasi uh, kung ito ko nagkakamali, ito yung siguro ang pinakamalalim na coral reef na ating uh, nagawa ng survey sa buong Pilipinas. Tatanong ko lang sa mga nag-aral nito, uh, 
Gano'n ba kaiba yung, ano, yung kanyang coral reef sa ibang coral reef natin sa, sa Pilipinas? Kung gano'n... Kakaiba siya. Kung yun ang, oh. ano, gano'n kalalim. Eh, oh, paano kalalim. siya na-discover? Oh. Oh. O, oh, paano siya oh, na-discover? Ang, ang lalim oh, oh. nito ay nasa, the shallowest part is 50 meters, no? 50 metro. Ang napapag-aralan natin dito sa Pilipinas at sa ibang bansa din, kadalasan ay yun lamang nasa mababaw na bahagi ng, ng, ng tubig. Uh, typically, the divers would be able to access depths of 20 meters. Sometimes, they go down to 30 meters. Pero ito ay nasa 50 metro. So, para sa conventional divers ay napakalimitado ng oras na pwede nilang gugulin doon sa ilalim. Sa tanong mo kanina, ano bang mayroon doon? Uh, based on the surveys that were done uh, by researchers funded by the OST, uh, a joint group from uh, UP Diliman, from the Marine Science Institute, and from UP Los Baños, um, Ang description nila sa nakita nila, there's, there are places where you have 100% coral cover. Ngayon, sa shallow coral reefs, halos wala na tayong makitang ganon na coral uh -huh. cover. Uh -huh. no? So isang malaking kaibahan na yun. Pangalawa, ang mga hugis ng coral reefs, yung life, ng corals, yung life forms nila ay kakaiba. Sa malalim ay sinaslimitado ang, ang light. May <coughs> yung life form nila papalapad yung mga corals para mas maraming ilaw ang matatanggap mm -hmm. ng, ng corals. Um, so, ibang life forms pero genera-wise, meron silang mga kahalintulad sa shallow water. Yun ay sa coral. Sa isda ay madami din silang mga nadokumento. Kung, kung tama ang aking uh, natatandaan, uh, meron silang in one, one dive, they were able to identify 125 species. Ang, ang, ang pinakamababang dami or uri ng isda sa isang uh, uh, dive ay nasa dalawampu. Wow. So, Rod, uh, siguro. Pwede ba kong magdagdag? <laughs> magdagdag ka doon sa ano, biodiversity uh, expert ka. Katulad nga ng sinabi yeah. ni Ando, karamihan ng studies natin sa mga mabababaw. Ngayon, nasa malalim na tayo, kailangan natin lalong pag-aralan uh, ang Oceana nga, nag-study yung Oceana group, hmm. uh, gumagamit ng ROV, no? remotely uh, operated vehicles. Uh, kailangan bang pag-aralan dahil sa malamang, ang isa sa kaibahan niya ay mas konti ang seaweeds o wala. Walang plant group dyan na katulad sa mga mababaw. Siguro ang magkakaroon dyan na plant group na benthic, ibig sabihin na kasama ng mga corals, yung mga coralin din na kayang yung lalim na yon at maakaabot ang ilaw na kailangan din ng mga halaman na yon. Pero definitely, may mga halaman na kasama yung mga corals. Yung tinatawag na phytoplankton, nakasama niya mga corals na yan. Kaya dapat pag-aralan kung ano yung mga corals na may, may kakaibang phytoplankton, baka may kaiba, kaibang phytoplankton na kasama, na pwedeng gamitin sa mga biomedical uh, discoveries and other uh, research na pwedeng gawin. Hindi ko naman ibig sabihin na baka lahat ay kakaiba, baka merong kapareho, pero baka may kakaiba na phytoplankton na kasama ng mga corals na nandoon sa lalim ng uh, lugar na yun. So, Rod, I think, um, tanong ko lang, no? yung uh, may report na medyo konti ang fish, pero napakaraming corals. So, yung explanation ba nun ay eh, dahil nga yung phytoplankton, eh, Di ba, yun eh, nagpo-photosynthesize yun. Hindi maabot talaga ng, ng uh, light. So, uh, sa food chain naman, importanteng-importante yung phytoplankton para noon yung mga fish uh, who are eating uh, the, the, the smaller fish, uh, you know, and then, you know, have the bigger fish. Yeah, actually, yung food chain dyan, di pa napag-aralan. Di pa napag Kasi ang kakainin, syempre, nung maliit na isda, ang mga phytoplankton, Correct. ang mga malilit na isda, kakainin ng mal malalaki isda. Yeah. So, uh, isang magandang pag-aralan doon yung food chain. Uh, magmula sa phytoplankton, 
a small fish, big fish, and so on and so forth. So biodiversity from the smallest uh, kind of organism to the biggest kind of organisms. Oh, pero ang phytoplankton very resistant yan. So sa mga pag-aaral nga natin, may mga opportunistic species kasi kaya siguro doon din yung pinatutunguhan ni Doc uh, Asansa na baka meron yung kakaibang mga phytoplankton o baka pati zooplankton that may be unique to that ah, particular plankton. area. Oo, kasi um, even in the past, phytoplankton, even if the conditions are quite, you know, low nutrient conditions or yeah, adverse so conditions, so then they really th still thrive. If yes. uh, Sometimes it's just low diversity. But abundance is not a problem for them. They will really live in areas where they are able to. You know, they're very opportunistic in that sense. And nature is, is yeah. that way, no? So yeah. they thrive talaga. Oh, minsan nagpapalit-palit pa yung variety, oh, may no? May succession, no? So, Alisa, inaaral mo pati yung mga phytoplankton ba na kung minsan naka-embed sa, ano, sa bato? Oh, oh later oh, on, oh. they become rocks kasi. They become so, rocks. So, the phytoplankton, some of them, they make um, calcite shells or yes. skeletons. And these calcite skeletons are actually also part of yung ating carbon dioxide system. They draw yeah. down carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And then uh, later on, when these phytoplankton die, they end up in the bottom. Yes. Tapos magiging part na siya ng sediments ng dagat natin. And later on, magiging bato talaga sila. So, yun yung proseso na ginagawa ng mundo natin para madraw down ng excess CO2 no, sa atmosphere. Napaka-rich talaga niyang ano, uh, uh, Benham Rice as a study site uh, for um, uh, geological history na yeah. makikita mo nga doon sa mga naka-embed na yeah. mga ano and especially uh, for us in the immediate shells. in the immediate uh, in the immediate yeah. time it's really the di biodiversity that's also very very yes. important for us because it's we think it's a and historically, the people from Catanduanes have always fished in the area. So they've known that area as a very uh, lush, fi thriving fishing ground. So that's something that we really have to study and treasure also. Can I add something? I just went to Isabela last time. And Isabela is quite near to partly, no? Uh, Benham Rice sa bandang ibaba. And then, nag-report yung mga taga Bifar, maray, marami is the species of fish na doon lang makikita sa Isabela. So, dapat yung connectivity no mga fish na yan doon sa Benham Rice kasi doon lang daw nakikita. So, dapat mahalaman natin baka may kailangan tayong i-protect to sa area na yon. So, marami, siguro five species or three species na doon lang nakikita sa, sa Isabela. Yung nga, nabanggit, baka nga daw may connectivities doon sa area. So, I think, ano, we'll get the uh Ando, who is our MSI director, to tell us how he organized the expedition to uh, study the Benham Rice. This is our first encounter with it. So, uh, well, nagumpisa ito ba ne? Na si National Scientist Lourdes Cruz ay uh, uh, lumapit at sa, nagsabi sa MSI, bakit hindi tayo gumawa ng research program? para sa Benham Rice. At mula doon bale, ay nag-usap-usap several uh, researchers within MSI. And then MSI looking at people who can help uh, outside of MSI. At doon bale ay bum bumuo ng isang team. Ang uh, nag-submit ng proposal sa NRCP, medyo malaki ang budget. Kung kaya ito ay pinasa sa uh, main uh, Department of Science and Technology na mayroon, may foresight na kinakailangang mapag-aralan yon Kung kaya napondohan itong pag-aaral na ito. There were, uh, we've had two cruises. One is in 2014. The other is in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, when During the first cruise in 2014, ang akala nila na merong mga mabababaw na lugar doon na mga dalawampung metro lamang, no, ang lalim. But when they got there, 50 meters pala yung pinakamalalim. No? Mm -hmm. Kung kaya, ang ginawa nila, they still, uh, with a lot of discussions among the divers for safety considerations, they still decided to go down, ang tinatawag na bounce dive, bababa, pero sandaling-sandali lamang sa ilalim, and then naakit ulit. And from... Those first dives, ang description ng mga, mga nagpunta doon ay parang 
uh, si Magellan daw sila. Oh, okay. Dahil ito yeah. ay, ay discovery. discovery. Lalong-lalo na yung nakita nila na very uh, high ang coral cover. Parang siguro para sa grupong ito, sa nabihasa na, madami na rin napuntahan coral reefs dito sa Pilipinas, nanibago sila na sa ganong lalim, 100% coral cover yung kanilang nakikita. Pero hindi lamang coral cover ang mayroon dito. Gusto ko lamang dagdagan ang mga nabanggit ni Dr. Azan sa kanina. Um, may mga nadodocument bale na mga seaweeds dito sa bahaging ito. At um, bukod sa seaweed, madami ding mga sponges. Okay? At um, itong mga ito ay dapat talagang tingnan natin. Ito ba ay mga ibang uri ng sponges? Ibang uri ba ito ng mga seaweeds? Ito ba ay ano yung kaiba nila sa mga alam na natin sa mga mabababang na bahagi ng ating mga coral reefs? Ando, I just have to note na yung inorganize mong team, multi-institutional. Yes. So, hindi lang lahat MSI. Yes. Merong mga ibang uh, from UP Diliman, meron from UPLB, meron pang from meron Ateneo. Meron, may Ateneo, oh, oh. may Mindanao. May Mindanao. Yan. So, talagang meron ding UP Baguio. Collective effort yan. So, yung, yung ano na yun, yung depth na yun, ang alam kong tawag din doon, a twilight zone mm. and beyond, no? And, um, but the observation is, the water was very clear. Very, very high clarity of the water. Now, uh, for scuba divers, all of us have been scuba divers from the past, including me. <laughs> um, I think you have to share with our audience what it takes to dive to those depths. Bakit yung nabasa ko eh, every two days lang ba kayo uh, magda-dive? Diba? So, kwento natin sa mga uh, kababayan natin, ano yung scuba diving na ginagawa natin but for uh, scientific investigation? Um, Madaming, uh, well, isang major consideration bale ay yung pag-build up ng uh, gases sa katawan natin. Dapat nating pantayan, bantayan. Kailangan nating bigyan ng pahinga yung, yung katawan. Sa Benham uh, uh, Rice, hindi ako kasama sa cruise na yun, but I do mesophotic uh, uh, coral twilight, ecosystems. Twilight zone, yes, yeah. twilight zone research as well. Oh, oh. And we've had dives down to depths of uh, 40 meters. Um, but typically, ang dinadive lang namin for safety considerations hanggang 30 metro lamang, yun yung regular namin. At kapag nag-mesophotic dive kami, minsan lang sa isang araw kami magda-dive. And that's at 30 meters. Mm -mm. But the researchers who dove in uh, the Banham Rise, they went down to 50 meters. At um, dahil sa mas malalim, ay mas marami itong pwede mong i-expect na consequences sa katawan ng tao. Kung kaya, matagal din yung, pag, yung mabagal ang pagangat at pag ikaw ay nasa surface na, you'll have to spend a long time to give your body rest. So, Benji, anong experience mo sa diving? Uh, um, ikaw ba uh, teka, nagfo-focus ka siyempre dun sa mga bato. Kasi biogeographer ka, pati na rin si Alisa, yung bato na merong mga plankton, no? Ako kasi, yung focus ko dati, sponge. So, kailangan ka mag-collect ano, mag, mag ng sponge, meron kang uh, uh, knife, no? Para, ano, in the net, no? Eh, net bag. Mahirap yon pero siguro yung excitement natin sa talagang direct um, visualization of the biodiversity more than compensates for the Well, ako, <laughs> ako seaweed sang tititignan ko. So, mabababaw yun hanggang 15 meters or 10 meters. Mm -mm. And then, isa sa nakakatakot na dive na ginawa namin sa Japan, kasi yung mga seaweeds ang hahaba, parang, parang forest talaga. Parang ka ma-entangle sa forest. Oh my uh, tapos, meron kami yung dive sa Bermuda. Oh, Napakaganda, yeah. syempre. Oh, no? <laughs> parang yung corals, iba. Pero syempre, mas mataas yung biodiversity ng natin. Pinakamataas ang biodiversity natin. Dahil tayo ang center of marine biodiversity. Walang kasing ganda ang ating uh, marine ano, environment, ang ating coral reefs. 
Napakaganda. May isang pinuntahan kami, Marine Protected Area. Sabi ko, huwag na nga tayong umalis, dito na lang tayo. <laughs> Maging ano, mermaid sa na tayo? Oo, oo, dito na lang tayo. So, Benj, anong Pero pinaka... mga twice lang dapat dumay kadalasan sa isang araw. Anong pinaka dive? best, um, deepest dive mo? Deepest dive mo, mga 35 meters. Oh siguro. my, malalim yan. Yan doon sa Bermuda yun. Uh, yung Bermuda parang may similarity dyan sa Benham Rise. Pero of course, mas malalim yung Benham Rise. Uh, kaya nga yung problema kasi pag human diving, eh, may, may limitations talaga ang tao eh. Kaya but yung mga nakita ko na, pinost kasi yung mga video, makikita nyo sa internet, uh-huh. yung video on Benham Rise. Uh-huh. Yung ginamit yung mga ROV or Remotely Operated Vehicle Underwater. Uh-huh. Uh, mas makikita natin yung biodiversity. Uh, napansin ko kasi dun sa mga video transects ng remote operated vehicle, makita ko may mga isda doon na uh, nung nag-dive ako sa Hawaii, nandun siya sa Benham Rice. <laughs> so wow. baka may connectivity yung mga current. May connectivity talaga yung mga eh, mas ocean Mas malapit siya sa Hawaii eh. Oo. Oh, oh. Kaya Pero, sa oh. Pacific ito eh. Kaya siguro ano, tama yung sabi ng mga manging isda sa Isabela na meron may isda. Nandun lang nila nakikita. Sa Pilipinas, pero malamang related siya dun sa makikita natin sa Central Pacific. Kasi 13 million hectares itong uh, Philippine rice nang tawag natin dyan ngayon. And uh, yung 13 million hectares na yan, mas malaki kesa sa Luzon. So, ikaw, Alisa, ano naman ang iyong uh, uh, binabantayan pag nagda-dive ka? Actually, Uh-oh. nung early in my career, I thought I was going to be diving a lot. Um, for the rest of my life. But it turns out, when I did my PhD, lumalim na lumalim yung area. So, hindi na kaya <laughs> ng humans. So, Uh-oh. ano nangyari, kailangan ko na ng either bangka pag walang funding, o kaya Uh-oh. kailangan may barko na talaga na equip para kumuha ng bato dun sa ilalim at saka yung putik dun sa ilalim ng dagat. So, biyan na talaga the diving. So, I've given up on the diving dream every day. Na araw-araw sana nakakapag-dive sa field. Uh-oh. Ngayon, kailangan na talaga ng barko. ng barko. Kasi nga, yung plankton na inaaral ko, na yun yung main na inaaral ko na fossil para maintindihan yung dagat, mas masaya siya pag malalim yung lugar at doon din siya uh, mamamatay sa areas na yon at doon din madalas yung mga bato na hahanap. Ang kagandahan naman, the good thing is that there are some of these um, areas that became rocks that actually are now above ground and so we can actually also study it in mountains around us. So it's also actually everywhere. So that saves us sometimes from funding. If we don't have funding to go out to sea or to dive or to get a bangka, we can actually do um, land uh, field work and study these particular fossils which actually used to be in the sea. So, ang lagi ko naalala kay Alisa pag sinasabi niya, even stones move. So, hindi Ito. lang yung mga living Ito. organisms, uh-huh. no? So, it's just telling us na sa marine environment, sa ocean, sa corals, talagang napaka-close ng interaction between the biota and the um, abiota. Oh, maraming mga pag-aaral ngayon na talaga Grabe. natatranscend yung biological oh, oh. part na apparently ang mga biologic among organisms they actually are also helping make rocks or stones yes, so yes. yung lithosphere biosphere interaction, interaction. Napak- and the hydrosphere of course napaka very very well linked pala yan kaya lang nangyayari siya lahat sa very minutest uh, scale ng ating earth pati na sa mga bato at sa mga sand di ba ando meron tayong ngayong interest na pag-aralan yung mga bacterial spores that are found in the in the sand uh, as well as the sediment and the stones. Eh, meron kang maraming ganyang sample sa MSI. Ah? So, anyway, um, I think, uh, Ando, ang ginawa ng grupo, maraming taga MSI, eh, to, eh, to explore um, yung nga, yung ating uh, biodiversity sa Philippine rice, nagdala tayo ng mga instruments uh, to augment uh, the, the observation and visualization capabilities of, of our researchers. I saw the photos taken by uh, Hill Jacinto, and I saw a video of Hill D uh, in the Benham Rice, and then I saw the photo of the GoPro mini camera. So, kwento mga yon? Kung paano natin ano, ginamit okay, yon? Ang, uh, ang GoPro ay napakaliit na, na camera na pa, pwede mong ikabit 
sa kung saan bahagi ng iyong katawan. Uh, and you can go down to 60 meters with it. We've tried sending a GoPro to a depth of 100 meters. Mas na yung rating lang nung case ay 60 meters. Pagangat namin buhay pa yung GoPro. Oh. Yung ba yung GoPro na nakunan nyo yung whale shark? Kasi yun uh, yung unang isda yata na tinwit ng, ano eh, ng MSI. Yeah, well, oh. we, um, we have our own ROV at MSI. It can go down to 150 meters. The, uh, the camera that is attached to uh, the ROV is low resolution. So ginagawa namin, kinakabitan namin siya ng, ng GoPro. Ng GoPro. Ah, and we send okay. it down to that depth. So, yung, yung whale shark dun sa ROV yun. Uh, may may oh. mga sharks kami na oh. document, but this is not in Benham Rice. This is in, in uh, 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 Tubataha and the Apo Reef. Nasa bandang 100 meters ka na, meron ka pa ding mga makikitang sharks bale. Well, the nice thing with, with the GoPro is that it's, it's relatively cheap. Okay, for something like 20,000 pesos, you can have an imaging system that can give you an excellent image underwater. In the past, to have an underwater camera, you will need something like at least 100,000 pesos. But now with 20,000, go ka na, no? game ka na. But the, the ROV allows you to see what's happening underneath. Mm -hmm. So while the ROV is moving, you see the images underneath. And so you can then, and you can drive it. You, mm -hmm. you can, you can send it where, where it can go. The, the GoPro, on the other hand, you attach, you, you attach weights to it, you send it down. Kung saan siya bababa, doon na siya. Yun lang, very limited, no? Mm -mm. Kung kaya, maganda na sa mga susunod pang pag-aaral natin sa uh, Benham Rice at sa ibang bahagi ng Pilipinas, mm -mm. Um, maganda na mag meron tayong mga sariling ROV na may uh, capacity to go down to depths, hopefully even beyond uh, 150 meters. Wow, yes. Okay? Yeah. Um, at may, mga, may capacity to, to, do, to take samples as well. Okay? Mm, so. May mga ROV models na merong mga attachment na kung saan pwede kang makakuha ng sample mula sa ilalim. Mm -hmm. At sa mga nagawa na sa, sa Benham Rice, pwede nating masabi na actually it's just a dot and a whole field of possible things to discover. No? Um, halos wala pa talaga tayong alam doon sa lugar na yon. Kung kaya dapat na ituloy natin yung pag-aaral doon sa lugar na yon. At hindi lamang sa aspeto ng biodiversity. Although the biodiversity itself, ang, ang daming dapat na gawin, no? Nabanggit sure. kanina ni, ni Ma'am Rod, yung connectivity with the mainland. Mm -hmm. Certainly, we'll have to look at that. Um, hindi lamang sa isda, kundi yun bang uh, mga corals, connected din ba siya doon sa mainland, no? Mm -hmm. Kung mapapangalagaan ba natin ang Benham Rice, mapap napapangalagaan din ba natin ang ang mga resources natin doon sa mainland area. Um, application, bale, nabanggit din kanina sa drug discoveries, uh, certainly, I think there are many things that can be explored in that area. Um, from a geological perspective, dapat nating tingnan isa sa aspeto ng hazards. No? Kung titingnan ng tititigan mo ang mga mapa na available sa atin sa Benham Rice. Um, may mga gilid yung Benham Rice bali na parang nag, nag landslide, wow. nag slump. No? And it's a huge feature. It's like more almost Geological half features. of uh, kung yung Benham Rice, kung ano yung, yung sukat niya ngayon, parang kalahati lang siya nung dati. Mm -hmm. Mukhang merong kalahati na bumagsak and and those if that happened in the past pwedeng pwedeng mag maka-generate ng napakalaking tsunami oh no? my yeah. at nabanggit ko kanina the Benham Rice is a volcanic feature and it's not a single edifice na volcanic doon sa uh, uh, Benham Rice uh, area Benham Plateau area madami sila doon at kung tititigan mo ulit yung mga mapa na na-produce ng Namria 
may mga similar features doon sa ibang lugar. Kung kaya, from that perspective, kailangan ding pag-aralan yung hazard, no, geological hazards related to the Benham Rice area. Yes. Uh, siguro, we also have to put in mind yung na seismically active siya. Talagang gumagalaw yung lugar na yun. Seismic reactive. Uh -oh. Seismically active. Wow. Uh -oh. Kasi yung lugar na yun actually is the Philippine Sea Plate, sea plate after all. Okay. And the Pacific Plate, very active na mga areas to ng mundo natin. No? So, uh -oh. Uh -oh. talagang may expect natin na ang Benham Rice na kasama siya nitong system na to, talagang gumagalaw siya. And it's a constant movement na alam nating uh, nangyayari around us. Magandang segue yan doon sa um, isang um, reason kung bakit uh, we think the Philippine rice is uh, very valuable. So there are claims that it is rich in uh, natural gas and oil and also minerals, minerals. including, um, well, uh, heavy metals, and also maybe iron that is um, uh, required to make steel. So as geologists, what do you have to say about that? Na volcanic siya. So, meron ba kaya siya talagang natural gas or oil? Yeah. Cool. Mind you, our MSI director came from uh, the National Institute of Geo Geological Sciences, or geologist din siya. Uh, para magkaroon ka ng, para <laughs> magkaroon ka ng lamis, pa. no? For, okay. for you to have oil underneath, you need a thick package uh, of sediments. Okay. You don't have that in the okay. Benham Rice area. Um, but what you have in the Benham Rice area, na, na, uh, metallic, eh, yung mga metallic resources, okay. eh, mas malaki ang potential para doon. Sa mga lugar na medyo malawak, Medyo flat ng konte. These are potential places where we can explore for what we call manganese nodules. Wow. Okay? Although wow. ang pangalan niya ay manganese, yes. hindi lang manganese hindi ang lang. nandun. No? At um, ito ay kadalasan nakikita sa mga lugar na very slow ang sediment input. No? Okay. At um, nakikita din ito sa mga lugar na mga dati natawag natin na mga, mga mid-oceanic ridges dati. Okay. Okay. Meron doon sa Benham Rice area, may mga lugar doon na very irregular ang topography. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they are aligned, no? parang may linya sila. Yun yung uh, pwede nating mga masabi na dati ay mga mid-oceanic ridges. Okay. Doon naman ang mga uri ng pwede nating tingnan na, na metallic resource ay yung mga sulfites. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, at sa mga modern day na mm -hmm. Iron vents associated with mid-oceanic ridges, hindi lang copper ang nakikita, meron ding ginto no? uh, na nakikita dito. So, malaki yung potential niya. Um, at base din sa pag-aaral sa ibang systems, madaming mga tinatawag na rare earth elements. No? Mm -hmm. At um, it, ito ay maaaring nandoon sa, sa Benham Rice area kung kaya kinakailangan nating pag-aralan ng mga ito. So, sa tingin nyo, Alisa, Ando, Rod, Benj, paano natin i-undertake yung systematic exploration of the uh, Philippine rice? I keep saying now Philippine rice. I don't know how many of you know why it was called Benham rice. Sino ba si Benham? Oceanographer daw. No. Okay. Alamin natin yung history. Okay. Kasi may history of science. <laughs> si Benji is uh, into uh, no, history of science. Yes. Well, uh, ang nawasong nasa internet yan eh. Uh, British oceanographer siya nag-una nag-map right. nung... Ano, kalimutan ko yung first name niya. Okay. Benham yung kanyang ano. Uh, okay. Siya yung una nag-gawa uh, ng bathymetric map nung... Yeah. Nung ano, British invasion sa atin, nung panahon na yon? Or from ano, more recently? I think na more recently. early, early 20th century. Ah, uh, okay. Ano ba kaman? Alright. Ano, tingnan na lang natin. Pero anyway, going back to this ano, uh, systematic exploration. So, usually, dalawang ways of doing it. Una is, okay, survey, reconnoiter muna. So, now you have your instruments to try to see what's out there. And I also know for a fact na sa MSI at Pathisa Physics, meron tayong project for bioimaging, say, of corals. 
di ba? So, magagamit ba natin yon? Magagamit ba natin yung drones? Eventually, no? Na mas, ano pa, mas versatile pa kaysa dun sa mga, uh, in, anong, ta- anong tawag natin doon? Yung uh, unmanned uh, vehicles, ROVs. ROVs, ROVs, no? Okay. Tapos, uh, tapos nun, uh, sa survey, pwede ba tayong kumuha ng mga samples? Uh, ang tanong ko, kumuha ba tayo ng samples itong last time? Nag-iwan ba tayo ng transect doon? May mga Ayan. samples na kinolekta doon okay. at ito ay uh, uh, pinag-aaralan ngayon sa Los Baños oh. ni, sa grupo ni Hilde na Corda. Okay. okay. Uh, sir, can I, yes. ano? Uh-uh. Ako, <coughs> sa tingin ko, ang dapat na gawin dyan, meron talagang multidisciplinary approach. Yeah. At saka yung horizon, yung perspective, mas malawak sa sa pang, pang hindi na pangkasalukuyan nang iisipin, oh, oh, no? Oh, oh. Kasi yung role ng Benham Rice hindi dapat tignan sa isang klasing goods lang at isang klasing service na mabibigay niya. Lahat ng bagay sa environment may iba't ibang services and goods na maibibigay. So pwedeng may mga ano nga, may mga metals, may mga biodiverse, diversity and so on and so forth. Ang iba't ibang agencies ng gobyerno, iba-iba yung kanya lang hi- gugustuhin. Bureau of Fisheries, Fish, DTI, marami. Uh, maraming, marami kanya-kanya. So sa level ng President, Tama. dapat magkaroon ng ano talaga, malalim na pag-aaral, uh, our research and so on, a plan for the Benham Rice. Kasi hindi, baka sirain na lang basta, Tama. dahil kasi gustong kunin ito, or and so on and so forth. Dapat nating alalahanin na ang coral reef area ay napaka-importanteng uh, lugar, eco, ecosystem. Sabi nga, by 2050, baka marami ng uh, coral reef areas na sira na. Okay, ito ay napakalagang uh, ecosystem na hindi lang para sa atin, kundi para sa humanity. Ibig ko sabihin, hindi lang atin ito, kundi para sa buong humanity. Yeah. So yung ating pagtingin, dapat mas malalim at mas malawa. Susuportahan ko yung sinasabi ni Ma'am Rod na science-based din dapat Tama. yung um, yung decision-making at yung policies na gagawin natin for, especially for the Benham Rice and the surrounding areas. Uh, we cannot be myopic in terms of how we look at it. Dapat talaga yung science-based na evidence merong marurunong din sa ating mag-translate kasi madalas yun ang problema nating scientists. Uh-uh. Intindi natin yung data natin, yung uh-uh. ating compartmentalized uh-uh. data, pero uh-uh. hirap tayo mag-integrate. And at the same time, yung next na problema is to how to communicate it to our, to our policy makers, to the leaders of the country. Uh-huh. And so there, are, there should be some of us who should be able to do that. And at the same time, look at it in a very large-scale perspective. Hindi lang yung dagat, pero yung land din na sure. nakakonect dun sa dagat. Uh-oh. Kasi, di ba yung ating mga pag-aaral na from the watershed all the way yes. to the to the reef, although medyo reef malayo-layo itong reef, na, reef uh-huh. na to. No? One ecosystem. So, we can only protect it if we learn about it and if we study it very well and not just us the mga scientists ang nagkakaintindihan but the policy makers also have to understand yes. what is at stake no? so um alisa rod and the bench i think yung um philippine rice right now uh yung exploration yan ang nag-trigger si national scientist luli cruz ng msi tapos nakakuha tayo ng support from the NRCP under the DOST pero yung boat galing sa DA BIFAR yes. Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic, and Aquatic Resources. Resources yung una partner sila doon partner, partner talaga yung doon. dalawang so, yung dalawang cruise. may cooperation naman talaga yung national uh, uh, departments or agencies natin pero Rod I think uh, you uh, should try to convince the DOST to look at the uh, the bigger picture we know that um, the DOST Secretary plans to have a presentation of the Philippine rice to uh, the cabinet to President Duterte and has actually tapped the MSI to yeah. take the lead, no? So, anong sasabihin so, natin ano? sa cabinet? Okay, ganito. <laughs> ah, nakapagsalita na si Ando yata sa, oh, oh. sa Senate, no? Sa Senate, oh, uh, oh. Magpropropose ang NAST ng okay. roundtable discussion, oh, ano NAST? policy discussion. Sabihin mo muna, ang, ano NAST? ang NAST is the National Academy of Science and Technology. This is the highest uh, advisory body to the President Tama. and the Cabinet and the Legislative on Science and Technology. So mm-hmm. three of us are from the NAST. We are academicians, ako, si Giselle at si Ando. 
So there will be, I will propose yes. a roundtable discussion, a policy discussion on the Philippine rice, multi-agency, yes. multi-interest, multi-stakeholders. And then after that, we can give our uh, dis uh, discussion points, our advices to the president and the leg legislative and so on. So yung mga experts ng lahat ng agencies na dapat tawagin, tatawagin doon. Mm -mm. Okay, so uh, of course, MSI will play a role there. So magkakaroon tayo ng strategic plan, I hope. Mm -mm. Uh, Siyempre, ang cabinet ang mag-iisip noon, uh, ibibigay natin sa presidente at sa cabinet. And I think we have to do this uh, fast. as fast. I think that's I so can. important. So Rob. we have to do this, I think, by August or yes. yeah, August. Uh, because we know that there's a lot of interest in the Philippine rice. And, um, well, that's because uh, by the Convention on Law of the Sea, yung um, Philippine rice in uh, actuality is part of our sovereign rights. Kasi it covers an area that is beyond the 12 nautical miles, okay, which is the limit or boundary for sovereignty of, um, of uh, no, parts of the sea. So yung prinsipyo doon ay yung tinatawag na extended continental shelf uh, beyond the 12 nautical miles is still part of um, humankind's, uh, you know, uh, what you call this, area of uh, research and exploration and navigation. So I'm just quoting what uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Tony Carpio said about sovereignty versus sovereign rights. Well, we know na marami ng interest dyan, no? from other countries. So I think Philippines should make that major investment because yung marine bi biodiversity natin, uh, talagang richest in the world. Yung Pacific Seaboard na yan, hardly explored yan, di ba? So, um, importante that we move fast. Kayang-kaya naman ng gobyerno natin na mag-invest in a space program. So, above uh, our you know, uh, terrestrial um, domains, what about investing in uh, the oceanographic or the ocean domains surrounding the Philippines as part of our sovereign rights? No? I think the, yeah. the national government should realize that we have more ocean surface, more ocean floor surface than land surface. Um, and we have barely explored, studied the ocean. Yes. So there is much more to discover in, in the ocean. It will be a big investment. Yeah. Uh, currently, if, if the question is, well, what can we do now? Okay, with, with what we now have, what can we do now? A big asset that we've recently acquired um, is having the research vessel BRP Gregorio. Velasquez. Uh, Velasquez. 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 BRP yes. Velasquez. It can yes. go out. All right. And we've used that in the past. Capable Sha for doing scientific research in deep sea environment. Kailangan ay ang crew matrain in doing scientific research. Okay. Yung barco kailangan i-equip mm, ng mga tama. instrumento. Ma-maintain uh -oh. yung Instruments. gamit. Uh -oh. Having that platform would be very important. And then we need to put people on board and give these people the instrumentation that is needed to do the field surveys the instrumentation to do the analysis in the laboratory, and then provide funding for capacity building. Um, kung titingnan natin gano ba kadami ang pwede natin na itap para mapag-aralan ang karagatan ng Pilipinas, hindi sapat ang dami. Kaya, may, may malaking kakulangan. Kaya, mm -mm. Kung kaya, ang isang dapat na pagbuhusan ng ating pamahalaan, eh, doon din sa capacity building. Hindi eh. nga ba yan ang ating ano, advocacy? Knowledge creation. Knowledge creation. <laughs> Knowledge creation. creation of the, uh, what we call the sorry, Supra supra-structure. Supra oh. 
Um, kailangan din natin to, to form uh, and link up strategically with, with partners. Yes, yeah. I agree. Uh -huh. uh, because we have to study things yeah. sure. now. Um, kailangan natin ng tulong. Hindi natin magagawa ang lahat ng uh, gusto natin gawin. Kung kaya dapat ay makipag-usap tayo sa mga ibang bansa, sa ibang grupo na maaaring makatulong sa atin. That's what we call international linkages. <laughs> oh, so, mga ginawa, ginagawa ng UP din ngayon. Oh, so, oh, so siguro advertise tayo. Oh, 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 na, mga... na rin ng mga SUCs at HEIs all over the country. So, talagang very, very promising yung nangyayari sa ating bansa ngayon. Eh, mukhang wala na tayong oras. Oh. Napaka-exciting nitong topic na to. Last words from the guests. Yun ang sabi sa atin. So, Rod, okay, um, any last Maraming salamat sa pag-imbita sa akin. Naalala ko nung 2005, si Dr. Santos na unang na, ano siya, geologist. Siya yung nag, uh, geologist na unang-unang uh, kasama ng UP at saka ng ibang agencies na nag-claim dyan sa ating uh, Benham Rice. Nagpapaalam sa akin din ako noon. Sabi niya, Dean, I have to be absent at the CEB. I have to do something for the country. So he started this, they started it. We have to continue this. We have to sustain our efforts to maintain, to sustainably make use of the Benham rice or the Philippine rice. Maraming salamat po. Okay, si Alisa naman. Uh, siguro ako naman ang message ko para sa mga kabataan out there na sana ay uh, you pursue degrees in science because we need more scientists in the country. Uh, after all, you know, uh, surrounded din tayo ng dagat and so marami din tayong mga lupa at marami tayong kailangan pakainin at saka palaguin sa ating bansa. Maraming salamat. Ando. Go into ocean sciences. Oh. The country needs you. Yeah. Bench. <laughs> sana ngayon nga, uh, importante yung Benham Rice at sana uh, maraming mga kabataan na um, kumuha ng career sa ocean sciences. At kung kayo gusto ninyo, pwede rin kayong sumama sa Philippine Navy. <laughs> Kasi sila ang <laughs> nagtatanggol ng, ano, ng mga maritime areas natin. Okay. Ako naman, sa akin, bottom line is, blue economy. Isa yung advocacy natin, di ba? So, yung Pilipinas, mas marami ngang, ano, um, tubig kesa sa, ano, sa lupa. Sa lupa. So, bakit tayo nakafocus lang sa agriculture? Dapat tignan din natin yung ating blue economy pati na yung aquaculture at yung mga resources from the sea. Bottom line is, I think we have to feed uh, and provide for the nutrition of uh, Filipino people, uh, people, communities in the remote areas. So, to the extent that Philippine rice, Benham rice can contribute to that, let's go for it. Maraming maraming salamat mga kababayan. Uh, this is Science Innovation uh, Series and our topic Today is Benham Rice or Philippine Rice. Maraming salamat, Benji, Rod, Ando, and Alisa.